everybody, it's Chris Eads, known online as Wu Teeny here with another Gay Gamer video podcast. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably could guess what this episode is going to be all about, because I finally got the opportunity to purchase a PlayStation 5. Um, but first, <laughs> but first, a quick movie review, um, because I did happen to go out to see Nope, uh, the new Jordan Peele film. Um, I decided that I wanted to see it in IMAX, so that's why I risked COVID with the high infection rates going on right now. I risked it just so that I could see it in IMAX, because I wasn't sure if it would still be in IMAX theaters next week. Um, and, and, and this is a movie that you want to see on as big a screen as possible. If you are at all interested in seeing Nope, go to the theater and see it on a big screen. Um, but be careful and don't catch COVID. Um, it's a good movie. Um, much like Elvis, I feel like there's a great movie in there, they just didn't make it. <laughs> uh, it just needed another pass, I think. Um, there's like this whole subplot that has some scenes that are very unsettling and shocking and effective, but then by the second half of the movie, they don't really tie in and amount to anything at the end, so it's sort of like, meh, and I, I can't... I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm having to be deliberately vague about this, but like, it kind of annoyed me, and I'm like, you could keep that subplot, but maybe don't spend quite so much time on it, because this movie is long. It's over two hours long, and it feels it. It's not boring, but it feels long. And I feel like if they had just trimmed that subplot and maybe tightened up the story at the end, you could have gotten it in a better, quicker, more lean, mean running time. Like, the actors are good, but the characters are kind of thin, and there's some plot points that aren't fully explained or explored, and you're like, what? Um, and the other thing that, the other reason why I wanted to go see it as soon as possible is to avoid any spoilers in case there was like a twist at the end or something, or what the whole actual movie is about. And I am glad that I did not get this spoiled. Not that there's a whole lot to spoil, but it's better to go in as uh, cleanly as possible. Don't even watch trailers. Um, so, it's good, could have been great, but it's good. Uh, and if you do want to see it, go to a theater and see it on as big a screen as possible. Sit close. I wish I had been a couple rows further up so that it was even bigger, honestly. Um, but now, on to the gaming news, which is that on Tuesday morning uh, last week, I awoke and checked my email and saw that late Monday evening, Sony has sent me an email saying, hey, heads up you're going to get the opportunity to purchase a PS5 very soon. And I'm like, woohoo! Uh, because, as you might recall, if you are a long-time watcher of these vidcasts, um, back in October, uh, I went to direct.playstation.com and signed up and gave them my email as someone who was interested in purchasing a PlayStation 5, please, thank you, at some point. Uh, and now, nine months later, I finally get the opportunity. I didn't know when that was going to come, from my online research, the sale starts at 2 p.m. Eastern, and one site said that they don't give you a whole lot of warning. So, like, 1, 1.30, I'm waiting, checking my email constantly, nothing's coming through. 2 o'clock comes and goes, I said, okay, it's not going to be Tuesday. And in fact, it wasn't, because at the end, at like, 5, 5.30 on, on Tuesday, I got another email from Sony saying, okay, here's your direct link, uh, the sale will be Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And I said, great, right in the middle of my lunch hour. So I ate my lunch, and then, like, at 1.55, I'm sitting in front of the computer with my credit card in one hand and the mouse in the other, waiting for it to turn to 2 o'clock so I can click it. The site, one of the sites I read said that you, can, you could get in a little early, but the email from Sony said that do not go early because you could lock yourself out of the sale, and I'm not risking that after all this time, so no. So, um... 2 o'clock, <clears throat> I log in, I click, they say, okay, here you are, you're in, you're in line, uh, and that your wait time is estimated at one hour. And I was like, what? Um, I'm like, they'll be gone in an hour. Like, what is going on? Like, how many invites did you send out? Uh, thankfully, within like five minutes, it was down to like half an hour, then 15 minutes, and by like 10 after, it was like, okay, you've got like two minutes left to wait you're fine. So it, the hour was completely out of line. It was really just like a 10 minute wait. Um, 
and then by like 2.15 I was checked in, checked out, and done. And it was bought, and um, I was curious because in my mind I want one of the disc ones, and I thought that that would be easier to, to get than the digital one, because the digital one, it's a, it's $100 cheaper, and I feel like most people nowadays are buying their games digitally anyway, so I feel like the disc one would be easier to get. But at like 2.30 I actually went back to the website just to see if you could just buy them that way. And the disc version was sold out, but the digital version you could apparently add to cart. Um, I don't know if you could actually do that or if it would put you in that queue with all the people with the invites. I don't know how that works as far as like going directly to the site or coming with an invite. Uh, but I had it. I had my disc version because I want. I have. I have games that I need to upgrade to the PS5 version, specifically No Man's Sky. I don't want to rebuy that, so I needed the disc slot. Plus. I'm going to be using this as my 4K Blu-ray player if I want to watch a 4K Blu-ray, so uh, I wanted the disc slot. Um, but then came the waiting uh, for the shipping notification, and of course they said orders placed before 2 p.m. ship out same day, orders placed after 2 p.m. ship out the following day. So I was like, well, the sale didn't even start until 2, so no, I'm going to end up, in, and it'll ship, I bought it on Wednesday, it'll ship on Thursday. So basically Thursday was just non-stop checking of email to see, come on, nothing. And then like around 6 o'clock, they finally sent an email. And I'm like, okay, because I'm a PlayStation Plus subscriber, I get free express shipping. So that's like two to three days estimated. So I'm like, okay, well, they're not going to deliver on the weekend, so I'll get it Monday. Tuesday at the latest, but probably Monday because it'll travel all weekend and then I'll get it Monday, no problem. And I figured this episode was going to be all about explaining how... I bought my PlayStation. But Thursday at like 6 p.m., I get an email from Sony saying, okay, your order has shipped and it will be delivered tomorrow by 7 p.m. And I'm like, what? Because um, in my mind, I was like, okay, it'll come on Monday and whenever it arrives, I'll just plug it in and set it up and get it downloading updates for an hour or so while I finish work. And then at 5 o'clock, it'll be done downloading all the updates and I can actually just play it as soon as I'm done with work. Unfortunately, Friday, summer Friday, so I finished at 2, and ended up just sitting around the house, staring at my watch and looking out the window for a UPS truck. Um, I, you know, I tried everything I could to distract myself. Nothing was working. It was very frustrating reading a book, watching TV, playing Animal Crossing, whatever. And I'm like, this is totally going to come at 6.59 p.m. But it actually came at 5.30 and at 5.30, I got my PlayStation 5! This is an empty box, obviously. Um, so, that was very exciting. And, thankfully, once I got it plugged in, which, side note, uh, it has to be plugged directly into the television, because I tried to plug it into the same HDMI hub that the PS4 went into, and no picture came up on the screen. I had to unplug it from there and actually plug it directly into the television in order to get it to work. Uh, it won't work through an HDMI hub, just FYI. Which sucks, because most TVs nowadays only have one or two HDMI ports. It's annoying. So those of us with, who are gamers with multiple devices, we have problems. So anyway, plugged it in, turned it on, logged into my PlayStation account, no problem. It ported over all my information, easy peasy. I did not do the whole transfer your PS4 to your PS5 because I've heard that takes forever. Also, I don't want to bring all my PS4 games over to my PS5. I want my PS5 to start clean. I want a clean hard drive. I don't want to clutter it up with all kinds of crap from my PS4. My PS4 is cluttered enough. I want to start my PS5 clean, and it'll be cluttered in a year. But I want to start clean, at least. Um, but downloading the updates, it was like just like two or three minutes tops, and then it's like, okay, you're ready to go. And I was like, well, why? Because that is the one thing, people were not lying, the PlayStation 5 is fast. Um, except for when it's trying to like download a game, or install a game off a disc, uh, then it's, of course, super tedious. Which I don't think downloading off the disc should be that tedious, that should be faster. But the internet is the internet, it's going to be as fast as it is. Um, so that was super exciting. Um, the problem that I ran into is 
the UI is terrible. I do not like it. Um, it's mostly similar to the PS4 where you've got your row of icons and you know you scroll left and right and whatever. But for whatever reason, for the PS5, Sony has decided to take certain things and like hide them in multiple sub-menus. So like if you want to check your trophies for a game, there's like multiple menus to go through before you can get to it. Just shutting down the system means bringing up the menu, bringing up another menu, scrolling down to it, scrolling over to power, clicking the power icon, then selecting, you know, either shut down or rest mode. And I'm just like, why are there so many extra steps? It's really irritating and unnecessary, and that is going to take some getting used to. Um, but the, the games... I, the other thing is that I don't have any games to play. So, like, obviously it comes with uh, Astrobot's Playroom, uh, which, like, demonstrates the controller, and that's great. You know, it looks bright, colorful, crisp, shiny. Um, teaches you the little features of the, the new controller. But um, it's a platformer, and I suck at platformers, so it's already getting a little bit frustrating, and it's, like, not super fun to play. Um, so uh, what I did was I imported Horizon, and originally I thought you had to install the PS4 version and then you could get the PS5 version, but it turns out you don't have to do that. As long as the disc is in the system, you can go to the PlayStation Store and it registers that you have the game, so it charges you zero dollars to download the PS5 version to your hard drive. So I was like, yay. That of course took forever. Like I literally set up Horizon and No Man's Sky and then went to bed and the next day I was like, okay, now let me check this out. And um, I have to say, I didn't really notice a difference with Horizon. Um, like, the game was already pretty, now it's just, like, prettier, I guess. Um, but then I was also reminded that there is a setting, deep in the settings on the PS5, where you can choose performance mode for 60 frames per second, or resolution mode for, like, 4K pretty graphics. So I turned on resolution mode so everything would look super pretty. Um, and that'll, like, default to that, depending on the game. Um, and I have to say, when I did play No Man's Sky, I did notice uh, a graphical improvement. Like, the grass was just more lush and realistic-looking, and, you know, the ground, just, it just felt a little more richer and realer. Um, so that was, that was kind of nice. Um, but there isn't a whole lot to play. Um... Like, the next PlayStation game I was going to play is the Star Wars, you know, Jedi Fallen Order. Except, that's a PlayStation 4 game. There is a PlayStation 5 game, which I have downloaded to my hard drive to play at some point, but it's not going to be a PlayStation 5 game. You know, it's a PlayStation 4 game that's maybe slightly upgraded to PS5. I don't think they're going to upgrade the graphics much. It'll just have, like, zero load times. Because, like, Horizon, that's the beautiful thing. Like, Horizon, instead of taking, like, a minute or so to load, it's, like, three seconds and you're ready to go. Same with No Man's Sky. Boom. Done. No loading times. It's fantastic. Or extremely brief loading times. Um, so that's great. Um, but I'm like, that's not going to be a PS5 game. It's not going to really showcase the PS5 hardware. And unfortunately, there really isn't anything to showcase the PS5 hardware right now. There, I feel like the majority of the big games, like, you know, the Assassin's Creed and the, the Horizon and the Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man and, and whatever... Those are PS4 games that are, like, slightly upgraded to PS5, if you play it on the PS5. You know, they're not at the point where they're making a PS5 game that they're going to downgrade if you want to play it on the PS4. Um, but there will be plain PS5 games that you can't play in anything else, so that'll be nice when that eventually happens. Um, but for right now, I'm sort of tempted to play Star Wars, but it's not going to really be a PS5 game. Plus, I really should finish Pokemon. So I'm like, eh, eh, but I want to play with my new toy. Eh, it's killing me. Um, oh, oh, before I go, uh, one, one last thing. Um, I think that the design of the PS5 is slightly ugly. It's just my opinion. It's kind of ugly. Um, and it's worse because I don't store mine upright. Like, upright, it's sort of okay, but kind of ugly. Putting it on its side, it's just like those, those fins just look stupid when it's on its side. And the disc slot is below the fin. So it's on the bottom shelf of my entertainment center. 
So, like, you can't even see the slot when you're going to insert a disc because the fin blocks it. And it's like, whose idea was this? Like, why isn't the disc slot on top? Why is the disc slot underneath? It's weird. Anyway. Oh, and the other thing. Um, I don't know who decided white was the way to go because everything else in my entertainment center is black. You know, the DVR box, the PlayStation 4, the Blu-ray player, the receiver, everything's black. And then I've got this big honking white PlayStation. It's bigger than my Xbox. It's freaking huge, this thing. And the controller is also white. And I'm just like, this is going to get filthy. Who decided white was the way to go? And I'm not going to, like, spend, like, $60 on another controller that's blue or pink or what. Like, no. I want black. But uh, They should have just made it black, but it's white. And now it's just going to get filthy, and I'm going to have to clean that constantly. And that's annoying. Anyway, it's going to show up Cheeto residue, you know? So this was a long one because I had a lot to talk about. Sorry. Uh, come back next episode and see if I've been able to resist playing more PS5 games. Um or if I've put Pokemon aside for the time being and possibly forever. Bye!